morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this blessed day today, Lord, that you have ordained. And we just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you have your way today. We thank you for your presence being here, Lord God. We just give you glory and honor and praise, and we're so joyful for what you have done and what you're getting ready to do, Lord God. We celebrate you today, Lord God. We celebrate this, this, this house today, Lord God. We celebrate the pastors of this house today, and we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that every person, Lord God, coming into the household today, that you will bless like never before, Lord God. Lord, we pray for the servants, Lord God, that you're using today, Lord God, to share your word today, Lord, that you will continue to anoint them afresh, Lord God, that you will have your way and move by your spirit today in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for an overflow and abundance. We pray for more than enough. We pray, Lord God, that we worship you in spirit and in truth today. We thank you, Lord God, for your power resting here, your glory resting here, Lord God your anointing let it destroy every yoke of bondage remove every yes, burden Jesus. lord god but and we rejoice for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in jesus yes, name we god. pray amen 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 hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 we give you glory lord yes. come on and lift your praise you're right worthy now. god hallelujah, hallelujah. We celebrate you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this Sunday, for it is Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. We remember you this day, oh God. Hallelujah. When you made your triumphant entry into Jerusalem, oh God, and all the people praised your holy name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They used palm leaves. And they use palm branches to give your name the praise and to give you glory. But right now we can use our hands as palm trees, palm leaves, palm branches. And just give God a wave offering this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We feel your power, Jesus. The power, the power of you riding in on that donkey on that day, God. You had decided, Lord, that you're going all the way, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. Oh, we come to magnify you today, God. We come to make your name great, God. Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, we come to magnify your name, Jesus. We come to magnify your name, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give glory and honor to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and fill hallelujah. this place with your praise. Your worthy God. Fill this place your with your praise. Hallelujah. Shabbat the Lord right now. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Give him honor. Hallelujah. 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 Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. What a most Hallelujah, Jesus. We welcome you here today, God. We welcome your power here today, oh God. We welcome your anointing here today, oh God. Oh Father God, we celebrate you today, oh God. Hallelujah for being our God, for being our great king for being the lover of our souls, for being the apple of our eye. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you, Jesus. We magnify your name, God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands. You can get a two-step if you want.
Beautiful among them. 
Father God, because yours is a kingdom, oh God. Thank you, Father, this morning for your goodness. Thank you this morning for your glory. Thank you this morning for the very air that we breathe come from you, oh God. We thank you this morning for life that is in you, oh God. Thank you this morning that you are with us, oh God. We thank you this morning you go before us. You make, oh God, every crooked path straight, oh God. And we thank you that you have given us, oh God, your rare God, oh God. We are protected by you, oh God. We say thank you this morning. Thank you this morning that we could say yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory, O oh God, forever and ever. O oh God, thank you this morning. Thank you this morning, O oh God, for filling us, O oh God, when we, O oh God, feel empty, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for strengthening us when we feel weak, O oh God. Thank you for your anointing, O oh God, that refreshes us, O oh God, that gives us, O oh God, that um we need to go forth in the name of Jesus. So, Father, today, O oh God, thank you, O oh God, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you have given unto us. Father, today, O oh God, as I go forth, O oh God, I thank you that self vera will decrease so that your spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way today, O oh God. Open every air to receive your, by your spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I declare today, O oh God, that your people, O oh God, we are willing, we are obedient, and we will eat the good of the land today, O oh God. I declare we are people, we are healed, O oh God, because your words say, we are, you were wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, but by every stripe you took, it was for our healing. So we declare that we are healed today in the name of Jesus. 
We declare we are whole today, O oh God. We declare we believe the report of the Lord that says, O oh God, that you love us, O oh God. Your report say, O oh God, that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by you, O oh God. And you love us today, O oh God. We thank you today that your words say, O oh God, that by your stripe we have been healed. So we lift our hands and we we praise you today, O oh God, for our healing, O oh God. Father, today we come against the spirit of depression. We come against anxiety. We come against cancer today, O oh God. We come against, O oh God, a, a stroke, O oh God, high blood pressure, O oh God. We come against these things and we declare we are healed and whole in the name of Jesus. We declare you restore eyesight today in the name of Jesus. We declare that we no longer barren, but we bring forth fruit in the name of Jesus. Father, open it up wounds today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Father, let your will be done today in this place, O oh God, and in the, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I bless you today. I honor you today. I magnify your name today. And I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise because he has given us a victory over every attack of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name today. Hallelujah. 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 You're a supplier today. You're a source today, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, oh God. And we say thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, O oh God. Thank you today. Today, my topic is with Christ, through Christ, and in Christ. It's taken from the book of Ephesians. And the book of Ephesians was written by Paul while he was in prison. This, in this book, Paul revealed the mystery of the church. Yes. God's secret intentions were, was revealed in this book, uh, uh, that a book of Ephesians. Paul is telling us what God wants from the church. And the church is made up of us. Amen. You and I. Yes. So when he talk about the church, he talking about us yes. as a unit, but corporately as a body. Amen. So the book of Ephesians reveals God, what God wants for the church. Amen. To form the body and to express Christ's fullness on the earth by uniting people as one. Jews... Gentiles, thank God, we were adopted. Back in the day, we had to stay far away. But thank you, Jesus, that now we are one in Christ. One in Christ. And even that, um, he's saying that Christ is the head of the church. He is the head of our lives. So that's why for us to do the things that God has called us to do, we have to do it with Christ, through Christ, yes. and in Christ. Yes. In chapter 1, Paul prayed that believers would know God's purpose yes. and power, yes. that we would receive spiritual wisdom. Yes. And, in, and, and we could see that in chapter we could get that, we could read that in chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. So 
And, and, and Paul is praying that God, the Father of glory, will give to us, us, a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. So Paul is praying, help them. Help us to understand God and God's way. Help us to listen to the spirit, know the spirit, and move by the spirit. He's saying that our, the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened so that we would know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the church, in the saints, Amen. in us, Amen. and in the body of Christ. Amen. But with all these things he's saying is one spirit, one spirit, the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that is in me. Imagine this is the same Holy Spirit in you. This Holy Spirit in me yes. could call you at any time and say, God said it. Thus saying the Lord. Amen. This Holy Spirit in me is the same Holy Spirit in you. That's why you could understand what God is telling me yes. to say to you. Amen. It's because we have that spirit in us. Amen. In chapter 2, Paul prayed for salvation by grace through faith. For the believers. And in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 says, But God, for in Ephesians 2 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he has loved us. Look at this scripture. God loves us. And because he loved us, that love produces mercy. Yeah. That's why he could say, his mercies, they are new every morning. And so too, I as a believer needs to be merciful. Amen. Amen. It's hard. <laughs> I ain't professing to be perfect. It's hard to be merciful at times. But this is what God said. So that's why we need to do the same thing too. If God could be merciful to us, we need to be merciful to each other. Amen. Verse 5 says, Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. See that word again. We have been made alive together with Christ. Christ. We're not alive by ourselves Amen. and say that I'm here and I did this and I preached a good message and I know I love the Lord and I know God is going to. It's not about I. It's not about I. It says with Christ, my strength comes with Christ. When I'm working through Christ, when I'm in in Christ, that's where it comes from. It's no longer I. It's no longer I can do this all by myself. I can't do nothing without God. That's how the world lives. That's how they live. But this is a revelation God has given to us. We as a church is no longer I. It's with Christ, we are all one. Amen. And it says, by grace, we have been saved. That means we didn't do anything to deserve it. Yes. Simple Amen. as that. Amen. We didn't do anything but God. But God. His grace. We have been saved. We didn't work for it. We didn't pay for it. We didn't get back. I get it as a, what is a gift from God. But to understand all this that I'm talking about, we have to have faith. Yes. Faith. We must have faith. Because we know, according to Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Go on to say, for he who comes to God must believe 
that he is, that God is. He's an awesome God. He is the creator. Yes, he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. He is a rewarder. Sometimes it don't feel like it. Sometimes it feels so tough and you feel like I'm obeying you, Lord. I'm doing all this and yet still he not answering my prayer. And it's not like he not answering the prayer. Sometimes we just have to wait. We just have to learn to wait. We become a microwave type of people. We want everything gets placed. Beep! And in two minutes, everything is there. But with God, we have to wait. He said, wait upon me. Wait patiently. Patiently. And at times, we have to wait. So to get, and so that's why we said that without faith, it, imports, it is impossible to please God. If we have faith, we could wait. Amen. Because we believe God, and we're going to wait till the thing that he's promised us is coming to pass. And so now, according to this scripture, we have been made alive together with Christ. With Christ, yes. we're no longer dead. The blood of Jesus take away death from us. Hallelujah. And now we're made, we are alive in Christ. Amen. When that blood washed us, cleansed us, yes. death went away yes. and life came in. Yes. yes, this body will die. And it's okay because the greater body that we will have in heaven Nothing compared to this. And that's when we did, that's when God's, the word said, God, the word of God saying, God is never ending. It's, he goes forever and ever and ever and ever. That's the new body we'll have. Amen. Forever and ever, everlasting. Amen? Amen? Verse 6 says, And raised us up together and made us to sit Together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has raised us up yeah. together. He didn't raise me up. He raised us up oh. together. All of us together. Yeah. All of us together. Yeah. Pastor Tim not going before me. Pastor Joy not going before me. Pastor um, Minister Penn not running ahead of me. Minister Mace, uh uh, you're, you're, you're going to wait. We're all going to raise up together to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ. In Christ. Not by myself. In Christ. Now, let me explain something to you. Sometimes, my, if everybody has been called and has a purpose, but my chief thing is prayer. I could drop, somebody come now, I could drop everything and start praying. Because I, 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 since I became a Christian, I would go through the Bible, and I would see, and I would highlight some things. And I said, Lord, let me be effective in this area. So somebody called me and they asked me to pray. Uh, immediately, I have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me to remember the verse that would apply to this person yes. in yes. prayer. That's it. That's it. So then, at that time, I've been made alive in Christ. Yes. Because if I, didn't know, if I didn't read this word, I would not understand it. Yes. I wouldn't understand it, but I'm made and alive in Christ immediately. And when I pray, I sit in heavenly places. Yeah. I'm sitting in that heavenly places when I pray. And that makes our prayer effective because I'm sitting in that place. I'm sitting in that place. Jesus said, He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. So when we pray, we sit right next to him, praying, lifting each other up, 
So yes. that's why we got to know our purpose yes. in the body in Christ. Yes. And, and stay in your lane. If your name is prayer, your, your lane is prayer, stay in your lane. Don't try to jump to the dance ministry, the skit ministry, this ministry. Stay in your lane so you could be effective and so fulfill the will of God for us on this earth. Amen? And verse 7 says, And that, and that in the ages to come, he, Christ, might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Yeah. For by grace we have been saved through faith. He said you, but I'm saying we. I'm, this is for us. And that not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast. It's God's. It's all God. It's with God, in God, and through God. Amen? Amen. Our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And you could get read that in 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 5. It's because of God's great love that he has for us. He has cleansed us by the blood of Jesus, making us holy by his grace. Not in ourselves. It's all in Christ, with Christ, through Christ, with in Christ today. Amen? Amen. And verse 10 says, <clears throat> for we are his workmanship, yeah. created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Why, we were, why were we created in Christ? For good works. For good works. Now, Sometimes the good work God is talking about here is what he tells us to do. Amen. Because sometimes we can run around doing good things for good people and doing, go, getting ourselves weary and tired and doing things. But the good work Christ is talking, God is talking about here is the work he tells you to do. We were prepared for good works. I might not be able to run around and visit you and, uh, and come to your house, but I could get on the, pay, for the phone, call you, and pray for you. Good Amen. works. Good work. Those are the works he's talking about. Amen. You might be home and God tell you, okay, cook a meal and drop for somebody else, and you cook the meal and you take it to the person whom the person was so happy. They're so you know, they were so happy and thankful because you don't know what they're going through. But if it's God, good works. Good works. You come to church on Sunday morning and God say, okay, bless somebody. And you're like, oh, God, God. they have a nice car. They have a big house. They wear in this lovely suit and they don't need anything. And God tell you, bless them. And you do it with your home and you give it to them. And they're so thankful. We don't know what was, what's going on behind the scene. Amen. That's good work. That's the good works God is talking about. Um, work God, we are God's workmanship, his work of art. He is the master designer. The universe is his creation, according to Romans 1.20. And we are the redeemed believers. We are his new creation. Yes. And that is found in Ephesians 2.10. We are the new creation. Remember in chapter 1, we asked for God, um, he prayed that God give us spiritual wisdom. Amen. Now that he's given us the wisdom, this is why now in chapter 2, he prayed this, Paul is praying this prayer, that we would understand 
the things, spiritual things. And we live in this world, but we have a spiritual mind, the spirit in us that brings things to our mind. And the world who do not know God as Lord and Savior, who do not have the Holy Spirit living in them, would not understand these things. But God gave us the revelation. And because he gave us the revelation, we now have to live to please God rather than man. Yes, I know you got to go to work. And yes, you do your job. You, you, and, but in your workplace, yeah, that's where you, that's your ground to tell others about Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So now, <clears throat> so now we have to receive the rich mercy, the great love, and the the kindness of God in Christ Jesus. Receive that gift of salvation by grace through faith. We need faith for everything that we do in Christ, with Christ, through Christ. Amen? Amen. Then God wants us to be confident. Be confident knowing that God has raised us up out of death into life and position us, positioned us securely in Christ. Amen. We, are, we have a position now in Christ. Whether it's a teacher, whether it's an evangelist, whether it's a preacher, yeah. whether it's an apostle, whether it's an intercessor, whether it's a dance instructor, a, dan- a worshiper, whether it's in the choir, he has positioned us there Amen. for his purpose. Amen. Not for our purpose, for his purpose. And he has prepared us to do that which he has called us to do. Amen. And it's in Christ. You know, sometimes people make, uh, they make a lot of plans. They have this vision, this ministry they have to, that God called them to, and they start making plans. And I wanted this, and I wanted that, and I wanted the other way. But if it's not in Christ, it doesn't seem to go for it. It, it, it break up after a while. But I thank God for Pastor Richard and Emma Butler. Because the vision God gave them was in Christ. And here we are, 40 years later, and still praising the Lord. And thankful, and thankful, and very thankful. Amen? Uh, So now we're going to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. And this is the third part of the prayer. He prayed first for revelation. Then now he's telling us who we are. In chapter 2, he was telling us who we are. We're in Christ. We're seated with him. And I like to put in, you know, if um, Philippians, I love this scripture. I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthened me. So whatever we need to do, do it. In Christ, with Christ, through Christ. Amen? Amen. So verse 14 says, now Ephesians 3, 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this reason. What's the reason? The building of the body of Christ. For this reason, building up the body of Christ. Building up the body. He's speaking to no, he's speaking to mature, seasoned believers. Matured, seasoned believers. Turn to your neighbor said, in Christ, in Christ. With, Christ. with Christ, through Christ. I am a seasoned believer. 
Amen. Give yourself a round of applause. We are seasoned believers. We're ready. We're ripe. We're ready. The word of God is in us. So that's why he's praying this prayer now. He said, for this reason, I bow my knees to the God of the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And back in those days, they never bow. They would stand and pray. But he bowed in humble to show humility, to show reverence. He said, <clears throat> Paul is praying and asking God now for the power of God to the, and the love of God that it would be manifested in us through Christ. And when he talk about power, power here, is, it means manifested power. God's kingdom authority yes. in us. That's the power he's talking. In us. That's the power he's talking about. Not the power to lift to a hundred pounds. Thank God for that power. But he's talking about the power of God. God's kingdom authority in us. He's praying for that, and that he's praying for that for the ch for sing as a single person, and also corporately for the church. This particular prayer is for the church. We know you and I make up the church, amen. amen. So some people may say, "Well, that's for the church." They mean the building. No, the church is us, you and I. We are the church, amen. 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 He's praying that. That power will give us dominion over the things of this earth. Yes. Over the things of the earth. We could say to that mountain, be thou removed. And, he's give, and also, he's given us this prayer power, giving us authority to walk in God's, the way God wants us to walk. Yes. And not be defeated. Amen. That we could hold our head high and say, listen, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your word. So he starts it off, like I said, to reveal the secret, the secret that is no more. Remember, back in the day, back in the day, in the Old Testament, the Jews had to go to the to, to, they had to go to the leaders in order to hear from God. But now we have the Holy Spirit Amen. in us, Amen. in us. Yes. God is in us. He's with us. Yes. Amen. And now that we have that, this is no longer secret because the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal the secret yes. things of the Father to us. Amen? Amen? So whatever God wants us to know, he revealed it through his Holy Spirit. Amen. He could reveal certain things to you, and then he would reveal certain things to us as we bring his word. Yeah. Amen? Amen? All right. It says, from whom the whole family in heaven, um, verse 15, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The church is made up of all types of people. Back in the day, Jew, Gentile, black, brown, white, tall, short, fat, old, young, babies, youth, all type of people. And why he, call, and why he calls it family is because we are one in Christ. Yeah. And our, our Father God is our Father. We, one thing we all have in common is our heavenly father. Amen. We all have one thing in common, one heavenly father. Amen. And because he's a father, he calls us his children, and that makes us family. Yes. Amen. We are all family. Amen? Amen? So it says in verse 16 that he, <clears throat> that he would grant you, us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So God is saying, 
he will strengthen us yes. with might through his spirit. There's that word again, through his spirit. And when he talks about strengthening with might, he's saying that we will become mighty with yes. the power of God. Yes. With the yes. power of God. That we will be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. And when we're strengthened by the Holy Spirit, it gives us what we need to, to go through what we're going through. And, and, and remember, even as Paul is writing this and praying this prayer, he's in prison. He is in prison. He is going through himself. But because of that power, that mighty power on the inside of him, he's able to overcome even that as he could write these letters to encourage believers like us today back in the day in the book of uh, the, the ephesians but today it encourages us to stand strong to know that we could overcome if we depend on the anointing that is inside of us by his holy spirit amen, amen. amen. he says <clears throat> that he would grant to us according to his riches we know God is the author and finisher of our faith. We know he's the creator of the heaven and the earth. Everything that we see, God has made it. Man, God give men wisdom. They create to create things. But it is God is always at the, the, before the thought comes, God is the one in the background moving things, moving people, say, taking them to different places in order so that his will be done. So we know that he is rich. He's rich. Yes. Hey, we're rich. Yes. I am rich. You are rich, but we're rich in Christ. Amen. I'm rich in Christ. Amen. 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 We're rich in Christ. Amen. Amen. And he would, and that we would be strengthened with might. You know, even the word says, when we are weak, then he is strong. Is that spirit man on the inside of us strengthening us? When we should be crying, we there laughing, saying, thank you, Lord. When we should be hiding in a corner because it seems that everything that we could think about is coming against us, we say, thank you, Jesus. When we could encourage somebody else and we are going through this worse than they are going through. But thank you, Jesus. With God and in God. When we're in Christ, we can stay where we are and, we'll, and the Spirit will tell us somebody else is going through. So we could jump up, pray, jump up, do what we have to do. In Christ. Through Christ and with Christ. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And today, God is saying to us, just like he strengthened Paul while he was in jail, he's going to strengthen us. He's saying to us, we go, we've been going through. But he's saying, he's right here. He's in us yes. to strengthen us. So in order to be strengthened, we have to do some things too. We got to do something. And we'll get to that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. You have to go there. I'll just read it for you. But now, in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, but have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Amen. There were times when we weren't saved. We, we did things that, mm, that's all well they tried. Mm. But thank God, now that we're saved, at that time we were far from God, but now we have been brought close to God in Christ by the blood of Jesus. In Christ, but by the blood of Jesus. Verse 17 says, That Christ may dwell in, I say, in our hearts 
true faith. There's that word, faith. That you, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, not some, all the saints, what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth all knowledge, that you may be, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Dwell. That word dwell. Dwell. To means to be completely at home. It says. In seven, verse 17, that Christ may be completely at home in our heart through faith. It takes spiritual wisdom to understand this. It, that's why we need to be mature. Think about that. That Christ may be completely at home in our hearts through faith. Think about it. Think about it. Some of us only think about Christ on a Sunday morning. Go home, put the Bible aside, and don't pick it back up until, oh, Sunday morning, it's church. I have to put on my best outfit. I have to shine my shoe. Here has to be done. That's a religious spirit. And we rebuke those things in the name of Jesus. Because we are matured Christian. Say this again with me. With Christ. With Christ. Through, Christ through Christ. And in Christ. In all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That Christ would move. This is what God wants us to understand. That Christ would move from being an acquaintance to us. To being the center of our lives. And, event, and that will make him the center of our church and our family. Yes. Amen. Center. That Christ will become center. No longer an acquaintance. The acquaintance is when you pick up the Bible only to come on a Sunday morning. Amen? You all with me? Yes. Okay. I'll just check in. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So Christ want, God wants us to become mature, to remain matured Christians so that he could speak to us, so he could move in us, that we as a, as a people would be with him, we will stay in him, and we will work, do work through him. Because his the, 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 the secret that was revealed is that the body of Christ have a job to do. We have a job to do. Say to yourself, I have a job to do. Amen. Now as mature believers, we have the spirit of wisdom. We have this and revelation in the knowledge of him. Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us. He will guide us. He is the divine and supernatural source of wisdom and revelation in Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. That was when he prayed that in chapter 1. So now we hear seeing the results of it. Now, through faith... The fruit of faith is revealed and are operational in the mature Christians. And according to verse 17, 
let the, the mature Christian, it takes faith for us to see this come to pass. A mature Christian is rooted and grounded in love. Rooted like a tree and grounded like a building on a strong foundation. The church, we, gasp God love at a spiritual level beyond intellectual and theological knowledge. So everything God has for us, the Holy Spirit is capable of teaching us. Yeah. If we obey him, it doesn't matter if you're the best, the, the, the best theologic, theolog, theologians, oh, for Lord, help me with my arm. Um, <laughs> but you all know what I'm talking about. Lord, for, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter if you went to all the college, have all the degree. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is the one who is teaching us these yeah. things. Amen. And God just used me to show you the example. It doesn't matter. He could take these simple people, the simple things, and teach others. Amen. Amen. So we are rooted like a tree. The, um, Psalms 1 say we are like a tree planted by the riverside. That means our root goes down deep. And we bring forth fruit. Yes. Amen? Yes. Okay. Then we back, we, we, we back in, um, I still read in here that, our, that Christ may dwell in our heart through faith. That we will be rooted and grounded in love. And when we're grounded in love, nothing, nothing, nothing will be able to come against us. Amen? And that we are in verse 18, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints, comprehend with every believer, every believer, Amen. every. That means we have an understanding of what is the will of God for each of us. Yes. And that we have that understanding so we could work together to build the body of Christ and build the church. Amen. That means build each other because remember, who is the church? That's right. So that we build each other up. Amen? Amen. To, to know. And then it says that we know the love of Christ. Know, that word know means to perceive, to understand, to recognize, to gain knowledge, to realize, to come to know. And that's the same word that Jesus said in John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It is a recognition of truth by personal experience. Amen. By personal experience. When God showed me something, and he reveal it to me, and I share it with you. Then you sharing it with somebody else is uh, is, it, is it keeps on going, and that's how I, the revelation is shared. Yeah. Because if God says some shares something to me, and I tell nobody else, it's just kept is is a secret now to me. But he said we no there's no longer a secret. He has given us the Holy Spirit to teach us all things. And we need each other to teach each other as God has to reveal things to us. Amen? Amen. That's why anybody there, 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 there's teachers, there's preachers, there's evangelists, all doing the will of God. Amen. All, all doing the will of God. So, and then four, it says, filled with the fullness of God. Paul prayed for believers to know that the order of reformation or revival bring about an intensification of the presence and the power of God. We have to have order as God will lead us. He's always the head. Christ is the head of the church. And everything that applies to the body, order comes from God. That's why 
we as a people have pastors that will direct us. And if we are under a pastor, when he directs us, we ought to move in the way he has called us to move. That's where order comes. And remember, we are all one in Christ. We work together to build his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Paul asked the church, that the church will be filled with God's fullness, which is the Holy Spirit would, be, would reveal things, the hidden things of God to us. And that is found in John 16. If you read it, chap John chapter 16, Jesus prayed. He said, Lord, I pray that they would be one, just like I and the Father is one, that they would be one. Yeah. They would be one. And he would reveal things of Christ more fully, achieving God's fuller work in each of us lives, unhindered, unhindered, unquenched, and ungrieved. You know how many times we have grieved the Holy Spirit when he tells us to do things and we refuse to do it? But let me do it my way. Let me do it this way. You know how many times he tells us to when uh, to, he he tells us to do things and we don't do it he's grieved the spirit is quenched it can't move no more and it's and it's hindered can't move you walk into a place sometimes and you say oh my the, you feel like a spirit of heaviness in the place it's hard to sing it's hard to praise it's hard to do everything as you take a, a, a different a different a, it's such a hard thing to do that thing which god has called you to do but it's because the spirit has been quenched it's because the spirit has been hindered but god is telling us according to this yeah. this prayer here he's telling us that he's, he wants us to be filled with the fullness of God, complete in everything that we do. The fullness of God speak of more than one experiences or aspects of his truth or power. How many times we could say, God did this in my life. God did this in my life and encourage others. And because God took me out of my pit and he has placed me where I am today, I could say, thank you, Lord. It's not me. It's all you. And that's how we build each other. But by, by that is how we build each other. Amen. That's the fullness of God. It's a full circle. And we help each other. The body of Christ, we are meant to be one. One. One spirit. So I encourage you to go home and read this book, the book of Ephesians. Every chapter, every chapter is a, is a to me, is a wealthy place. It's a wealthy place. The book of Ephesians. And Paul is pray, Paul pray, you want to learn how to pray? You pray like Paul pray. The Bible says, God said he will not, his, his, he will, his words will not return unto him void. But it shall accomplish that which it's been set to do. So in closing, I want you to do what God, the, this is the instruction God gave me. Seek hunger and thirst to know and understand the surpassing greatness of Jesus' love for us. With Christ, we are made alive. In Christ, we are adopted as children of God. In him, in Christ, we are fully accepted, not halfway, fully accepted in Christ we will find a love that is higher and deeper than you could 
ever imagine. Through Christ, we can do all things. Through the Spirit, we can begin to know this love. And in knowing it, we will be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, today I thank you. I thank you that your word has gone forth. I thank you, O oh God, that we are hearers and we are doers of your word. I thank you today, O oh God, for filling us with the fullness of God. I thank you for that inner power, O oh God, that comes from you, O oh God. I thank you for your spirit that comes into us and has strengthened us, O oh God. I thank you today for we as a people, O oh God, as we go forth, O oh God. I thank you for that maturity that teaches us to connect to each other so that we can all walk in the gifts and the calling that you have placed on the inside of us. Today, I ask you to stir up, O oh God, by your spirit, everyone, O oh God, that you have called, O oh God, to go forth to do your will in the name of Jesus. I declare we come forth, O oh God, unhindered, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray today, O oh God, for your anointing on the inside of your people, O oh God. Stir us up by your spirit this morning, O oh God. I declare, O oh God, that springs of living water that start flowing out of your people in the name of Jesus. And I declare, O oh God, that as we go forth, O oh God, that you, O oh God, will continue to make a way, O oh God where there seem to be no way, oh God. So Father, I bless you today. I honor you. I thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, not my will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, O oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for opening up our eyes of our understanding. Thank you for that deeper love, O oh God. Thank you, Father, that we would comprehend with all the believers, Lord, what you have for us, O oh God. Thank you for revealing those things that was, which were once secret, O oh God. And showing us, O oh God. And even as you show us, O oh God, I thank you for that one spirit that is in us where we all come together, unified, O oh God. So, Father, I say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, is there anyone in this house that does not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Today is a good day. Now is a good time because he is in this house. Jesus is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Jesus is a way maker. He gives us peace. He comforts us. We're all good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You maybe have your seats. And now we have some announcements. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
bless your holy name, O oh God. Glorify you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now we have announcements. Thank you, Lord. It's our 40th anniversary. Yeah! Hallelujah. It's our 40th anniversary. We set and come and uh, we come celebrate with us. As we celebrate our pastors, Pastors Richard and Emma Butler. Yay! Awesome pastors. Man and woman after God's own heart. Yes, they and as you want to see you no know love, you meet Pastor Emma and, and, and Richard Butler. They are... Uh, the most lovable people I have ever met. And you want to know love? They are the example of love. Amen. They really are. Pastor Butler always have a good word for you. Yes, he, does. Uh, he doesn't have a lot to say, but the two little words he could give you could just pierce your heart. Yes. Amen. Sweet, sweet people. Amen. Amen. So come out and join us. What's the time? 3 p.m. And I notice a lot of you have on blue. I guess blue is the color for tonight. Well, blue it might be the color for tonight. So please get our blue. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Well, now we go have our own announcements. Praise God, everyone. New Christian Life Church's 40th church anniversary, a legacy of love and leadership, St. John 13, 34, and 35, March 24th, 2024, at 3 p.m. We are looking forward to have a hallelujah good time. Bring a friend with you, and all are welcome. Our annual church picnic will be held on Sunday, April 14th, at 12.30 p.m. at Buttonwood Park, 5300 Lantana Road. Directions, it's on the corner of Haver Hill and Lantana Road, just on your left-hand side. Thank you. <laughs> Save the date. The next Men to Men Fellowship will be held March 30th at 6 p.m. here at New Christian Life Church. Bring a friend. Calling all teens and preteens. Come on out for Teen Tuesday night every second and fourth Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at New Christian Life Church, where you can have fun, meet new friends, and learn how to be a bold Christian amongst your peers. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 and 9. Bring a friend. Make sure you have a front row seat this Resurrection Sunday on March 31st at 10.30 a.m. at New Christian Life Church to witness the boxing match of the millennium where Jesus Christ the Messiah takes on Satan the deceiver for the salvation of the world. Hope to see you there. Join New Christian Life Church for Push Prayer. Pray until something happens. Every Wednesday at 12 noon, Join us on the prayer line by dialing 425-436-6335 with access code 843093. You can also call or text prayer requests to 561-577-8891 or 561-312-3350. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14. New Christian Life Church Annual Love Offering, March 24, 2024. Sowing seeds of faith together as we build and expand the kingdom of God. Give as the Lord prospered you. 
Rev. Richard W. Butler. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Thank you for continuing to faithfully give your tithes and offering at New Christian Life Church, Boynton Beach. There are three ways that you can give online. One, Givelify New Christian Life Church. Two, Cash App, dollar sign New Christian Life. Or three, you can send a check to New Christian Life Church, P.O. Box 1634, Boynton Beach, Florida 33425. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. 2 Corinthians 9, 10. Amen. I like that part. Multiply the seed that you have sown. All right, with that in mind, let's prepare ourselves to bring our tithes and our offerings. Hallelujah. Now, keep this in mind. Mind this. This is not your love offering. The love offering will be taken after service. So this is our regular, can I use the word regular? This is our regular tithes and offering at this time. So let's still rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. As the ushers come on down. We bring it with the, with the understanding that God is receiving this as our sacrifice unto him. I was approached by one of our members, a great woman of God, and, and, and she was wanting some understanding. So I thought about what she said, and that's what you have to do as leaders. You have to think about when somebody comes to you, you think about what they're saying because their heart is open. And we don't want to close their heart. We want people to keep moving forward in the things of God. So I thought about what she said. She said, we have to get back to seeing how, you know, when, when bless those who didn't have to give. And I thought about it and I like, and, and I said, well, you know, we're going to address that, but we're going to look at it. We're going to bless those, oh God, bless them with a seed to give. Because we want them to be a participant of the return of their giving. So it's more so to bless those who have a desire, but bless those, Lord, bless them with a seed to give. 
Amen. So the next time they can be able to be a participant of this giving thing. Hallelujah. And see, this is how this thing takes place when we listen to the Holy Spirit. He is there to help us in this walk with God. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you. We bless you today. We thank you, O oh God, for these tithes and offerings that was given according to your word. And Father, for those who had a desire to give, we ask that you would give them a seed. Open their hearts to, to receive the seed. Because he says, your word said that you supply seed to the sower. And we want everybody to be sowers in the kingdom of God. That you may continue to show your grace and your mercy. Dear and precious Holy Spirit, we ask that you give us the wisdom and the understanding to use these monies that was given out of joy and that was given in faith to use these money for the for wisdom for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on this earth. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for visiting us out there in TV land. Come back and see us again next week. Have a happy Palm Sunday. Glory to God. You may take your seats.